how long have you guys lived next door to each other? Eight years. It's actually five, but he thinks it's a lot. He thinks, <laughs> there you go, straight away, yeah. No, it's actually five, Dennis. It's only about, five. About five, yeah, five or six years. But we've known each other uh, socially. When did you put your book out? It was like... 2011. He came to get my, an, my book autographed it in Wimslow. Do you remember that? What I remember is like someone like pulling me into a bookstore <laughs> and saying, yeah, I've got my book, I've got my book autographed here. Because he was a big hero of yours, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I've been a fan for a couple of seasons. Dennis was the new signing, the new hotshot, and um, and it was very exciting. You have that thing with uh, back then with boys, as it was, where you know one of my mates worked to, was into Colin Bell, and another one was in uh, Mike Summerby, and a big mate of mine was into Racer Hartford, and sort of Dennis was my guy, so he's lumbered with me now. When did you first realise that you were next door neighbours? Did Dennis kick his ball over the fence, or was he playing his music too loud? What was it? Yeah, we just we heard you were moving because. Um I think I saw you one day. You were just because I know the, the house is was. It's actually the house is built on Colin Bell's old site where Colin lived uh, before he moved away and sadly died since. But um, so I knew all my neighbours because it's only just around the corner. Um, and then I found out he, he bought the house and um, oh blimey! Here put, we go. put a for sale sign up. Yeah, I said better get out of this Double area quick. quickly. Uh, but we knew each other because I was running around. Uh, and we, we, we sort of bumped it into yeah. each other, didn't we, in the neighbourhood? Because I was, I was running and, uh, and I'd, hear, I'd hear these quips coming from out of a car window. Like, the last time I saw a pair of legs like that, it was hanging out of a tree. <laughs> and um, what was the other good one? I'm running down the road there. It's like uh, someone's let the ducks out of the park. <laughs> Stuff along those lines, really. So uh, I was only trying to encourage him to keep going. That's all I was trying to do. Cause yeah. Because he was in, he was really, in, he still is, into yeah. his, his fitness and he's running. And, uh, yeah, he was doing very well. Now, Johnny said some lovely things about you, Dennis. What about Johnny? Were you a big fan of his? I wasn't in the Smiths because the Smiths period was when I was all over the place, retiring, having children, moving house. It was a real, the 80s was a real sort of a blind area for me for music. But afterwards, I got got to know him very well. And then you see, and obviously through the time as neighbours, his professionalism, and I found out obviously uh, after signing his book, that I was a hero was here, so we, we sort of had, uh, built up a, a very nice relationship. But what I liked about him is was his intensity towards his his his, his, his industry, his professionalism, the intensity. I loved all that, you know, because that sort of reflects back to me. Because I thought I was fairly intense on my first my sport, now my businesses, uh, and I enjoyed listening to his his, his his approach to how he gets where he wants to do in his business. Um, you say you've you've built a, a nice friendship now. Do you do you do much together? Yeah, yeah, we hang out quite a yeah, bit, don't well, we? Yeah, we, we get on the walk. We've had some. In fact, I own, I own my lunch, you know, because he, he got some. True. He got a bike for it for the uh, for the lockdown, and we borrowed it. And he hasn't got it back, so I own my lunch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I didn't have neighbours for years. You know, like for oh, 20 odd years. Uh, you know, I lived in a, a spot that was pretty remote, and uh, and then. Um, and, and then sort of moved to, I moved down six, six years ago or so, and then and Dennis is my neighbour, and uh, so it worked out pretty well, because, uh, cause, you know, I knew so much about him, and, we got, you know, as mates, I think we got a lot in common, really. Yeah. You know I mean? Like, um, you know, I wrote about it in my book, really, like uh, Dennis's, uh, the way he played on the pitch, fast and quite intense and tenacious and all of that, you know, you, you know, you read into, when you're younger, you know, you read into these things and, and you know, not uh, not above being a bit of a showman, a little bit flash. And, um, you know, I, I sort of, uh, I, I kind of, I can relate to that. I could relate to it as a little boy wanting to be playing football. But, uh, you know, I think we're both sort of, uh, we're, we're both pretty intense about what we do, really. Yeah, but we've also we've both had very similar upbringing as well, from a very working class background, you know, and against all odds. Uh, both not exactly tall, tall fellas and big fellas, but we had that uh, de de desire to be successful in, in whatever industry you went into. And both of us have done pretty well, I guess. So on the night of the Champions League final, will you be texting each other? Oh, blam, we get, we get texts all the time when, during the games, yeah. yeah. But we're very fortunate we've got a friend around the, just another neighbour just up the road. And he's got a cinema room and we keep getting invited across for the games, you know, so we have a little occasion up there, don't we? We do, yeah. We've been to um, 
you know, we've we, we got some games and, uh, you know, we've got some games together and uh, I think that's what we started off doing, really. Yeah, we? he's got, been got, in my, oh, you've been a guest in my box. Got games yeah. and Dennis has been at a few of my gigs. I think I spent more time with Dennis than I have with uh, some lead singers, that I, <laughs> actually, funnily enough. <laughs> Rope him in, but uh, yeah, so you've been, you've been to quite a few of my gigs, right? Yeah, I've enjoyed it. You've been to London, uh, Manchester, yeah, we've been. Yeah, so, so we're, you know, and the families are very, very close and all that. Uh, I did a video, got roped in, Dennis's son's an actor, roped him into one of my videos that I did with the uh, project I did with Maxine Peake. So I had John, uh, yeah, it's kind of quite handy, really. Yeah. I put his bins out now and again. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about Manchester City. Um, Dennis, we're coming up to about 40 years now since you finished playing for Manchester City. Can you believe the transformation in the club in that time? Uh, I can, um, for the simple reason that the club was big enough to, um, to accommodate the size it is now. It's just that we had so many uh, mistakes made in the previous regimes over many, many years. We finally got going together and I was delighted to be a part of the board that uh, sort of got the club back on back on some sort of um, sensible level and realistic level, um, back into the new stadium, back in the Premier League with the, with a the profile and obviously with the sailors going through uh, to the Abu Dhabi Corporation and they realised the potential, you know, and they've invested fantastically and I think they've got a, an unbelievable strategy to develop the football club not as only as a, a domestic um, club but also uh, globally. Can you quite believe what's happened particularly in the last decade? No, no, no. I, you know, it's, it's been incredible. I mean, first and foremost, uh, the opportunity to see really good football is, is the, the thing really um, for me. Um, I may be a little unusual like that because I, I wasn't fixated on trophies. I think maybe, you know, being a City fan throughout the last 30 odd years, you, as, I, as I say, that the thing I was really wanted to see was really good, committed, uh, entertaining football I would have just taken that for a few years but the trophies what is it like eight trophies now or something in, in the last 12 years and um, that's been phenomenal it started with you know I mean the all City fans will be you'll know what I'm talking about but seeing week in week out getting to see people like David Silva and Sergio Aguero for 10 years so on and Vincent Company and stuff like that on that level just seeing great quality seeing good quality games has been really fantastic and then um, you know I'm from Manchester so I'm obviously I, I'm evening up a few scores uh, and leveling that out because well that was you know as a City fan it was really unusual that our rivals were just so in the ascendance and so dominating of, of uh, English football it was very unusual so you know, for the city, I think it's worked out. It's made the city very much more interesting in a football sense. Not just because I'm a city fan. It's kind of the kind of to and fro between city and United fans is is more interesting. I think, especially for city fans, obviously. So no, I wouldn't have. Uh, I could never have imagined it. And you know, the figures for city fans, the people like Vincent Company and Kevin De Bruyne and Sergio, and um, you know, we really love them. Uh, and they've stayed for a long time. You know, that that says a lot about. The club, I think, you know, I've been very privy, you know, privileged uh, sometimes through my friendship with Dennis to, you know, be involved in the club behind the scenes now and again. And um, you know, I'm really impressed. I like there's a, there's a really good vibe there, you know. So. Yeah. And Johnny, you have spent time with Pep Guardiola. What's yeah. he like? Well, I met him a couple of times and um, spent a day with him uh, a couple of years ago. Um, and he's kind of like what you think he's really. He's very charming and uh, but intense and earnest and genuine guy. What I found to be very nice and very generous was that um, you know sometimes you, if you want to talk you want to talk about football and you think well he's not going to want to really you know it's a bit of a busman's holiday, but he will talk about the ins and outs of football all day long, which I found to be a very gracious thing really. He's, he's what you think he's a real he's a real gen and um, and a, a, he's intense as well I think you know he's really into what he does he's workaholic so I can kind of relate to that. Dennis, 1970 the last time City won a European trophy the last time they were in a European final 
So it's 50 years now. It's, it's a long time, isn't it? It's long overdue. Oh, without question. Um, I think that's, especially now, I think if you look at the last 10 years, probably 10 to 15 years, the evolution of, of our Premier League has been phenomenal. You know, and it's gone globally, you know, and so really you're thinking well, Manchester City should be a part of our global market. Uh, and we finally, to get uh, the, the, the massive support globally, you have to be a big hitter in Europe. Uh, and now we are that and we are feared throughout Europe and, uh, and I think it's fantastic. Johnny, you said you were never really particularly interested in trophies, but what would it mean to win the Champions League? I'm very interested in trophies now, don't get me wrong. I just, it was so out of my sort of realm of imagination, really, just what it could for it. But it would, uh, it, it has become, you know, you've got to be honest about it, it's become somewhat of the holy grail, really. Um, it's a little ironic because, we, you know, if we do win it, we'll win it in these times. But I think, I think City fans will just take it. And um, I think that phrase winning mentality, uh, it's, it's tied in with that, really. Because uh, you know, you, it seems like a, a a space in the trophy cupboard now. Whereas 15 years ago, it was just it would have been a pipe dream. It would have been unthinkable. So it's very much attainable, particularly as we're in the final. And and also, you know, the, the performances. Um, I, you know, I know people who are not City fans, but who were astounded at the the uh, performance in the semi final against PSG. You know, I mean, that yeah. was that was world beating and football fans saw that as being a real uh, kind of the proof if you like of, of City really having arrived if, if there was ever any doubt so it, it makes sense to us I think I think we need to do it so we can move on I don't mean to sound blasé about it but I think City fans now feel like let's get this first one done so we can carry on with greatness and cross our fingers I think that's the plan Dennis, you and I have worked on a number of Manchester City homecoming parades over the years. One particularly memorable one. Yeah. Look at this, Dennis. Just take a look over your shoulder. Ticker tape. We can't see a thing, we can't hear a thing, but we don't mind doing it. It is such a shame, isn't it, that what could turn out to be the greatest season in Manchester City's history, and they won't be able to share it with the supporters like that. Oh, well, the question when I became a director, the one thing we wanted to do as a board, we wanted to relate to our to our fans and communicate to our fans and let them come on the journey with us. And I think the, even the players uh, have, have recognised that without the fans, it's a totally different, totally different environment. And you can only imagine what the scenes would have been like if they won it. But not only that, it's it's what happens to the community, not just on the on the day. It's what happens in the the surrounding areas, all the communities, the very supporters branches, you know. And I'm, I've got uh, emails from the New York City branch. You know, they they meet in in Manhattan when there's a game they're on Zoom and they watch the games. And you know, we're spreading far, far and wide. It's just uh, it's just unbelievable how it has developed. Johnny, City fans seem to have moved on from the whole European Super League scandal very quickly. Do you have an opinion on what happened? I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I joined in with all, I was shocked like all fans of football, I think. I was just really shocked. I've got to say, speaking personally, it was really heartening and very encouraging to see Gary Neville say what he said in the way that he said it. I, uh, I thought he was, I thought he was, See someone with some, so much passion uh, and he's someone who really understands the machinations of the game and the modern game and he, you know, I, I, I really admired that to be honest which is sort of, you know, City fans can feel him going like that now but I think most, most fans of football would agree really and so to have, a, I think, it, it appeared that in the media, funnily enough, if you ask me that question, it, football fans had a voice and I thought that was that was now when I look back on it, I thought it was really pretty, pretty brilliant. As regards City, I, I you know, I've got a, I, I've just got faith in the club that they care about the fans, you know, um, from from personal experience. It was just a fear of being left out because obviously, if you want to be the best in the world, you've got to be be a part of the group. But um, what disappointed me was the fact that you know, the the likes of. Real Madrid, Barcelona and Juventus in particular, their debt was too huge. They were looking this to fill a hole in their debt. You know, what I would like to say is, 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 is on that point, the fact that, gentlemen, why didn't you start running your business more professionally, more, and more efficiently? 
don't just use other things to, to fund debt and, 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 and plug holes with, with um, this ESL money. You know, I think you've got to look at that. Nobody's really mentioned that. I think Barcelona, 1.1 million, uh, billion in debt, uh, Real Madrid, almost 900 million, Juventus, six, 700 million in debt. You know, gentlemen, you know, learn to run your business more efficiently. And that's, that's to me, that's a big lesson that should come out. OK, let's wrap up now with just a couple more on the final. Can I have your predictions, score predictions, Dennis? Yeah, I think we'll, we'll score first. And I think that will be the most important thing because whoever scores first, the opposition will have to change tactics, change the, 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 the sort of in-game management. And I think that's a challenge to both Tuchel and Pep, is how well can you manage in-game? Because the both will go, obviously, with strong sides. We get the first goal. I think it will be 2-0. You You confident, Johnny? Yeah, for some reason I think we're going to surprise Chelsea because the, in the two games when they've beaten us, I, don't, <clears throat> I didn't really recognise there, there was an aspect of City's game and their attitude that um, I thought was missing and I didn't really recognise it from uh, the way we often play. So I think if we turn up the way we normally do. I think, to be honest with you, with the semi-final, the first one that, where they beat us, I just felt like the club, that Chelsea Football Club, wanted it more than we did. For a number of reasons, we're, City were caught between the two Dortmund games, and I think that had a big, uh, you know, um, impact on it. I just think the club, I got a feeling that the club needed it more, really, and that's why we we let it go and that trickled down into the pitch. But uh, I think we're going to surprise Chelsea, and if we turn up as, you know, we can do, I, I think we'll, I think if we dominate him in the first 20 minutes, I think we'll win three three nil three one. I think I think we can beat them comfortably, yeah. And if City do win it, which one of you is hosting the barbecue? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to see me anywhere near a fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there'll be many celebrations and uh, uh, quite, quite justifiably. It's been a long, hard road there and I think the DNA of Manchester City um, has been fantastic with the players have brought in um, and I think we'll thoroughly deserve it. The way we've played, the quality, the entertainment, the skill, the technique, you know, I think we've all the elements that you want in a successful operation we have here. Yeah, we'll be going out. <laughs> that was brilliant, thank you so much. No, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Rio Ferdinand or Jamie Carragher have got anything to worry about, but uh, no, we're, no. We're, we're, we're all right. We're all right.